Yo, what's up guys? Diesel here, back with some final gear. Today, I'm gonna be doing a complete guide on the border conflict. I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about the event, but before we do that, I do wanna say we are having a $20 giveaway for 2,000 subs at YouTube, so do keep your eyes out for that, and if you do like the content, do be sure that you're subscribed so we can get that $20 giveaway going. Also, I do stream every Monday and Thursdays over at twitch.tv slash dcellgaming, so do be sure to follow me over there if you want to follow along on our shenanigans that we get involved in. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in game real quick and talk about the border conflict, what you guys are here for. So a week before border conflict actually goes off, you do have a sign up period. So you must make sure that you sign up for the, uh, for the border conflict before it actually starts, okay? So you have a week to do that. You can choose any faction out of the three, Hexel, Arita, or Kegya, or you can choose random like I did. Random will give you 15% more honor while you're in the border conflict. Jumping into the border conflict, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. So let's break down everything that you need to know. So you're gonna move along these tiles, these hexagonal shaped tiles. So these hex tiles here that are not the river or the mountain region. So the mountain regions and the water regions you can't go onto, but everything else is considered a town. And each of these tiles are gonna be either level one, two, three, or four. So as you can see here, this is a level one village. Over here is a level two town. Right here is a level three town. And over here is a level four castle. So capturing these nodes will help you and your allies get more honor overall. So we'll go over what all that means in just a bit. You can only expand on tiles that are yours and your teams. You can identify your team by this really dark blue color. So this is how you know this is your base. I have this dark blue tile here. That lets me know anybody expanding from here, I can expand on. So you can see here, I have an offense on this level two town and I can expand there. These dark blue tiles here are me and these light blue are my teammates. And if you go across the map here, you will see these are also our allies as well as they're light blue. But as you can see, the base node is light blue, which means I cannot expand on these tiles. To expand into a tile, you need to attack it. You must kill the enemy that is guarding it. It's an NPC, unless there is another player occupying that space. However, once you kill that, you will have a time frame where you can station somebody there. It is very, very important that as soon as you open up a node, you station somebody there. You can always go back later and go into the station and you can change your units later, okay? You can change them at will, but listen guys, as soon as you open up a node, put somebody in there so you don't lose it because you do have a time frame in order to station units. Now you can only have four tiles occupied at a time for yourself. So you really need a lot of people participating in this event to get honor very quickly because you can only do so much by yourself. Now to expand after you have four tiles, you're gonna have to withdraw a unit and then expand into the new tile. So let's go ahead and just do this real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So you um, you know, know exactly what it is I'm talking about. So right here, we're gonna go into station. And as you can see, I have my main team stationed here because this is the expansion slot that I wanted to keep open. Now, one thing to note is if you have units stationed in defense, you cannot use them against bosses or attacking you know, other units. So you must withdraw those units out of defense to go into offense and then take them back from the offense back into defense uh, overnight. It's kind of what you want to do. You you want to end all of your plays and then station, well, restation all of your strongest units on your tiles. So right here, we're going to withdraw this unit and it's going to give you this big scary message, but it's fine. It's just telling you you're no longer going to get honor, you know, from that square. But hey, we already know that. So we're going to confirm that and then we're going to go over here and we're gonna attack this node and we're going to expand into this slot. Okay, now that we have this, you can see it says protected. So you immediately wanna go in and you immediately want to station a defense there. Once you do that, you have now taken over that node. As you can see, it is now dark blue and now we own that node and we're getting honor for that node. The map itself 
when you first open a map and the border conflict first starts, you need to understand that it is separated into outer, middle, and center pieces. And each of those nodes or each of those layers are separated by bosses. So when you first join, you're gonna be locked behind this boss here, the level one gate, and he is uh, the great ape or whatever he was called. So you're gonna have to kill that monster as a team before you can break into the middle. Then you have to kill one of these four nodes here the level two bosses so you can get into the middle tile and then the last boss here is the level three so yeah you're gonna have to break into those pieces a little bit at a time so before you get started that's kind of your main objective is to kill the first boss and then start expanding into the map now you can see at the bottom every six hours you're gonna get new gold tickets and new silver tickets they're called shiny and grand tickets i don't know why they didn't just say gold and silver probably would have been easier every six hours you're gonna get one ticket of each the gold tickets are used to attack bosses and the silver tickets are used for expanding around the map and attacking other players now you can purchase silver tickets or shiny tickets at 80 crystals per four tickets and this will go up to 100 it goes up by 20 every time so the first four will cost 80 then 100 then 120 then 140 etc etc the gold tickets will always cost 50 crystals for one ticket every day that the reset happens that gold cost does reset however so it, it's pretty easy like if you want to use a little bit of crystals for some expansion you can you can use 80 crystals and expand a little bit further and then the next day that'll reset and you don't have to spend the 100 you it, it does reset back down to the 80. now looking down at your honor here you can see i have 12,141 honor that is your primary resource on getting ranks and stuff like that and we'll go over that in just a second and you can see i have four out of four tiles stationed so remember guys, once you have four out of four stationed to go further along the map, other players are gonna have to like expand with you or you're going, you're gonna have to withdraw one of your tiles so you can move like I showed you in the video. So looking at the ranks, you can see that we have Viscount, Earl, Marquis, D uh, Duke, Cardinal, Prince, Grand Duke, Bishop, and Queen. You start out at the Baron rank so do keep that in mind and every rank you get after baron you get a little bit of resources for the main thing about these titles other than the rewards is at duke you can attack the level two bosses and at prince you can attack the level three bosses so you can't just go through wail your way through and just attack and kill everything all in one go that's not possible because you need certain ranks to attack certain bosses you can attack the level one gate at baron but to attack the level two gate you need duke for example and to upgrade your rank you need to do rank missions and this primarily consists of getting honor you have to have your honor at certain thresholds and then at higher ranks you'll start getting stuff like you know successful stations one time you know stuff like that so once you get up the idea is you want to get up into duke you want to start attacking those middle bosses and then from there you want to get to prince and then start attacking the middle boss and that's pretty much how it goes all of the rewards that you get from this event are calculated and distributed at the end of the event so don't be afraid if you're because like when you go to attack these nodes you're gonna see that hey i'm supposed to be getting you know crystals or whatever and you're not seeing it that's because all of this is tallied up at the end and you will get your rewards at the end of the season and speaking of rewards you you do get ranks you have a monster fight rank here where it'll tally up how much boss damage you've done and at the end of the season you'll get a rank based on that and also on the pvp kills you will get a separate title for that as well for season one you can you can see there it says s1 master of fate you know s1 peak blossom s1 pioneer so those are other rewards that you're going to get from this event as well. If you click enemy fighter rank, it will show who's in the lead there, how many wins, how many defeats they've got. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much straightforward, I think, but I do think it was good to call out so you guys know what kind of titles we're looking for. So that's pretty much it for Border Conflict. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to help you guys out to the best of my abilities. So what are my overall thoughts about Border Conflict? I think it's a lot of fun 
for the first or second day for the first or second time i mean this seems to be a very long drawn out event right and i can see players getting very burned out and very overwhelmed very easily with this event they'll they're definitely going to need to offer some kind of off season or downtime right like run it for a month and then you know have an off season for a month and then maybe run it for another month i can really see players getting burnt out on this because it's so long it's so drawn out and it's so in depth i really don't see a vast majority of players taking something like this seriously with pvp people want to get in and get out you know they want stuff like real-time arena where you're matched up with players on the fly or an arena system where you go in and you tack you know defense uh, you know you attack players that have a defense already set up that's generally what most players want and having something this in-depth will probably burn players out pretty easily and a lot of them a lot of them might not even really log in honestly i do think however it is a it is a pretty fun game mode i i think it's overall pretty well done and uh i just think for the first or second time it's probably gonna get kind of old after you you've done this for you know two months or whatever it's most likely just kind of gonna get old but hey guys that's just my opinion on things do let me know in the comments down below what do you think about the new border conflict season i would love to know your thoughts that wraps things up have a great day guys be safe out there and as always I'll see you in the next one.